Hey everybody, it's Apps again, and uh, today I'm going to give a brief overview over a speed strategy for boiling waterfall that we figured out and sort of tested the last couple. Actually, we really only tested it for a day, but uh, the difference between this one and White Castle is that it is much higher rune requirements um, and generally overall power requirements and even comp requirements than the, the White Castle one. So this isn't gonna be applicable to everybody, but it is interesting. And also it's as people's overall gear increases, this is probably gonna be more likely that like just any sort of assortment of group of people can do. And it'll be super nice to save everybody some time. We'll put it that way. Okay, so the, the overview is we managed to skip the adds phase of boiling waterfall. So when you're killing the dragon at approximately, you know, 70% health, it's gonna go invulnerable. And then following that invulnerability phase, you'll have a DPS phase. Following that DPS phase, you will get the adds phase. Uh, the adds phase actually is probably the longest requirement of time in the raid. Um, so, if you can skip that phase, you save a lot of time. And in our case, our, our sort of fast clears using with the add phase is approximately two and a half minutes. With this one, we managed to get it in about a minute. Uh, I'm gonna give an overview of the builds real quick. So you'll notice uh, we're not bringing very much healing. In fact, um, this Annabelle that her Wraith brings, uh, I believe he switches it out. He doesn't even act, he's only using it to hit the power threshold, which is around 350,000. Um, in addition, the Wusa on the left is also does not stay in uh, the entire fight. That Wusa only gets used at the very beginning to provide immunity so Sussy doesn't take uh, the fear. Uh, theoretically, every all three of us would probably want to do that, but in this case, it just wasn't in the cards yet. Um, the, the next overview is you need, obviously, at least one uh, character. And in fact, for this strategy, you only want one person using a unit that ignores beneficial effects. So in our case, we're actually using Lupinus. So because of how strict the DPS requirements are for this raid, uh, slowly breaking the first invincibility phase is actually somewhat important. So we're using Lupinus because it doesn't burst through it necessarily very quickly. Uh, the Thea Mars is just a DPS, you can use whatever. I believe Sussy is going to switch in Crow at the beginning of this fight, so he's using actually three DPS. Uh, I'm bringing two buffers, one of which is the all-important Windy, uh, as well as Crow for max DPS. We're using a lot of Crow in this fight, I'll put it that way. Uh, Haraith brings in, I think he switches in uh, Crow here, and then he's bringing Crow up uh, for it's also a DPS increase. Uh, I'll go through the, um, kind of, I'll walk you through kind of how it works. So, yeah, so we're, we're like getting set up here. Um, and actually we, we tried this a lot of times. I'll put it that way. So I'll pause at important parts to, to sort of explain what's going on. Uh, the dungeon starts normally. We run in, I think I take point, uh, the, the actual specific person doesn't matter. I pre-buff with Windy, no, no, okay, sorry. I actually, I pre-buff with Bastet in this case, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Pre-buffing with Windy, I tried, but the buff doesn't last long enough. So the first thing that's gonna happen is for our run, we sort of reset it when we didn't get good first pools. It's gonna put down three area effects on the ground. Uh, in this case, we got pretty good ones. These two are unimportant. Um, the other one, I don't even know. Okay, it's over here. So it's not that big a deal. These, these don't matter. Um, I'm using Fire Weapon. We're specifically trying to get as many stacks of random debuffs on it to power up Crow as possible. Um, you know, everybody plays the, plays the game right. You dodge all the ground effects. Okay, so something very important here is notice how I'm full mana. Um, for this strategy, the you have two phases where you get the DPS. One is the knockback phase that starts at 80 80 once you hit it to 80 percent it does the first knockback and starts to go invulnerable um so what we actually do is kill this slowly using as little mana as possible for the first phase um so notice i'm pooling mana i'm not burning my dps 
we kill it down and we specifically set a requirement of once it hits 85% or really as close to 80 as possible, we start nuking. So this is where I start burning mana because this is the point where it actually becomes a like you, you need to get it down as far as possible here before it goes invincible. So we dump our mana, we do pretty good damage. Here's where it's about to go invincible. We get it to 54%. Okay, so the next thing is because the, the damage requirements are so strict, the next thing we're going to do is we're not going to break this as quickly as possible. Um, this part's kind of dicey and this kind of relies on your Bastets being good and providing a pretty big shield. Um, but the idea here is we're actually going to pool the, we're going to be pooling mana and killing this as slowly as possible. We're not using mana, we're just letting our mana build up. Uh, the crows will stack up armor breaks. Um, here, Horaith actually switches. I, I can't remember if he actually, I didn't even look. I, he may have had Annabelle in the whole time for heals. I'm not sure. Uh, he may have pre-buffed only the stead also. It, I'm not very prepared, just, just ignore this. So, uh, but the point being is the most important thing is right now we're stacking debuffs. The only thing hurting it is Lupinus. And Lupinus can actually go nuts here and break the shield immediately. And that's actually ends up killing you. Um, so what I did right here is because I pulled up my mana pretty high, I actually switched to Windy to get a, a second buff of Windy. So we have, a, we have a double stacked crit damage buff going into this last phase. Also, Windy was about to die. So at this point, I'm kind of low mana, but they were pooling mana this whole time. At this point, it's literally, it, it gets down, it goes into the knockdown phase. We theoretically have full mana, full buffs. We're basically ready to go. At this point, it's kill it as quickly as possible. This, this time, we had really good results, and obviously we killed it before it even wakes up. You generally have another 10, maybe, maybe five seconds after it wakes up to continue DPSing. So this part is, your biggest uh, DPS phase. But if you do all this correctly, and this is, um, basically if, if you do all this correctly, it should work, but the, the damage requirements are really high and we do have multiple crows. Uh, there may be other units that do as much damage as crow, but he's pretty instrumental at, I think the current level of gearing of most players to be able to pull off this strategy. Um, as I said, we, we tried this, it took us several hours of sort of play testing and setting up different builds, uh, figuring out sort of the exact optimal arrangement. Um, as people's gear gets better, this is going to get easier and more people will be able to do it. But I wanted everyone to sort of be aware that this is a way you can do it. And also, you know, to toot our own horn a little bit to show off how cool we are. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Hopefully you all can uh, take a shot at it for yourself and hopefully you will succeed. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, get out there and farm some dragons and stuff. <laughs> all right, see y'all later.